right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Nicole Greer, who is over in lovely Charlotte, North Carolina. How are you doing, Nicole? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me excited. Of course, of course. And Nicole is the principal coach and CEO of Vibrant Coaching and helps individuals, corporations, government entities, nonprofits become the people they were created to be through defining and fulfilling a mission um, to work better in teams and exemplify excellent leadership. And what we're going to talk today about is is vibrant culture, how to create a vibrant culture. So let's get straight into it, Nicole. Let's start, start off with the definition. De define for me what a vibrant culture is. Yeah, a vibrant culture is one that is lit from within, meaning that the leaders inside of the company are leading with clarity. Everybody knows where the goal is and has a plan of action to get themselves there. Also, we are leading with integrity. Character is one of the utmost, most important things that we drive inside of our business. We say, you know, men and women of character uh, put out amazing product, take care of the customers and take care of each other. And finally, the T in lit stands for we transform the ordinary so we have a group of people who are excited about the future and want to do more than the status quo we want to grow we have a growth mindset so that is what i define as a as a vibrant culture excellent uh, but so let's go um let's go through that a little bit uh, and i think the first thing you said was about everybody understands the vision of the company, what the company is trying to achieve, what their role in it is, etc. And that is something that I think a lot of people have had the experience in organizations where sure, you know, they get the they get a vision statement from the executive team, they get another thing from marketing, their own department tells them something else. And they end up, people end up feeling kind of disconnected in a little way. You know, they kind of, that's where silos come up because they think, okay, well, I'll just do my part because I don't really understand the rest of it. I don't understand how I fit in. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think that kind of vision is one of the things inside of organizations that is not really dialed in. And so the senior leader, it all starts at the top, as you know, and all the stuff flows downhill. And so the senior leader has to be able to say, you know, this is where we're going and can actually tell us a story about the future. So one of the things I talk about all the time in my coaching and also in my consulting is putting together stories where people can imagine what the business looks like one year from now, two years from now, three years from now. And we develop a story that talks about how things are actually different. You know, you know how they have all these shows where they redo somebody's living room or somebody yep. gets a makeover. It, it's the same idea. I mean, and people love a makeover, right? So if a leader can say, okay, here's where we are today. This is what it looks like. This is the experience we're having, but wait, Three years from now, this is the place we're going to be at, and this is what we're going to, going to be experiencing. And people can see a definite difference. That's huge. And leaders have a hard time you know, talking about the future because I think they're worried about getting it wrong. And so it's very risky, I think, sometimes in leaders' minds. I can't tell people what to expect. Well, no, you can't you know, tell them 100% what to expect, but you can certainly cast a vision that people can put in their memory and that we can make a memory of the future. Don't miss that, John. And yep. people can say, okay, the reason we're working so hard is because we're, we're trying to develop this thing in the future. So I, I invite leaders all the time to create that vision, make it fantastic, make it in great detail. And we really just talk about, um, you know, what is possible at first and get into probability later. Yes, yes. No, I, I agree with that. I think one of the big struggles people have uh, now is, you know, we used to talk about like, uh, you know, five year plans and 10 year plans and all of that kind of stuff. And then we've had crisis after crisis. And then we had the COVID pandemic. And now people are making, you know, three, three month plans and five month plans and one year <laughs> plans. So I, I think that is a that is a challenge. But I think it's also it's an opportunity really as well for leaders to be able to say, listen, here's the best most educated uh guidance that can give you on where we're going 
but it may change as we've seen it may change dramatically and i may need and, and i do need all of your help in shaping it and i guess that's the that's the big upside for you know employees in an organization is they have the chance to shape the future because it's it's not written right <laughs> It's not written. A hundred percent. And and I, I don't I don't know if you agree with this, John, but I think people need that picture of the future with all that we've been through, to your point. Um, you know, I need some hope. I need yeah. something that sounds exciting. Um, so you know, I'm tired of hearing about COVID. I'm tired about all the stuff. So here's what I want. I want somebody to tell me this is where I want to go. Help me get there. Um, and then of course, see my place in it. And I think that you know, you've got to uh, share with people. And you said this at the very beginning: is that not only is where the company is going, but like here's your part. Here's what I need you to do. So we got to take that vision, trickle it all the way down, so that an individual knows how they can contribute. Um, and that's done through a really robust employee performance management system, which I think is essential. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and probably quite rare too. But uh, and the other part yes. is, uh, no, I was, I, it does remind me as one of the things I, when I ran a couple of companies some years ago. And one of the things that I did was once we had the strategic plan and the budget all that done for the year is distill it down to something that could be put on one page and then i thought okay so it can be on one page how can we really connect everybody to it so going a bit old school laminated it sent it to every single employee in the company and said stick this up in your work area wherever that happens to be and and remind yourself on a daily basis this is what you're doing but also importantly if you are doing something and you can't connect it to what's on that laminated piece of paper, talk to your manager about it because you may be doing something that we don't need you to be doing. Uh, absolutely. And I think that, you know, we, we all get hired, you know, that you get the day you get hired, you're all excited, you mm -hmm. got a new job. But the other thing that's happened with all the crises and COVID and all the things that are going on, all of our jobs have morphed. Yeah. tremendously. And so it's it's also a good kind of call to action to say, okay, let's take a look at the work that you're really doing, right? Where, you know, where the job description started maybe four years ago when you mm -hmm. got this position. And it might be time to, you know, get with HR, human resources and figure out what are all the pieces and parts to the job that you're actually doing. You perhaps, you know, might need a new job, job title, you know, things like that. And I think, you know, when somebody's paying attention uh, to the work that somebody's doing and, and providing them clear direction, again, uh, we have to lead with clarity that um, people feel secure and they feel happy. And I don't know, that's why people have jobs in the first place. They want to feel <laughs> secure and happy. <laughs> so let's, let's help them out, right? And uh, and I think that, again, we start with the vision um, that it's, it, that it's, it is big and it is exciting. I, I just really want to encourage leaders who are listening to kind of go big, right? Because, you know, most people who own businesses or lead businesses are, have that entrepreneurial dreaminess about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they really need to tap back into that and, and, and get a feel for it. I had heard one time by Bill Hybels, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he um, is, a, is a great leader. And he had a quote that I thought was so good. He said, uh, vision leaks. As in, like, you could tell it to people, but like it gets a hole in it and it drains out and yeah. nobody's, yeah. And so you got to keep telling it and telling it. That's the other part of it too. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think this is another thing I want to pick up on is, I think this is a great time for us to change our approach in many ways, because if you think about it, traditionally, uh, perform, I, 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 tend to go on about this, but I'm going to go on about it again. I don't care. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it's like, you know, um, traditional performance reviews that people do every year, it always seems to be, here you go, Nicole, here's two things you did great. And here's 52 things that you we need you to improve <laughs> upon, right. And, and I think people having been through what we've been through is, why are we not focusing on what people do well, forget the 52 things you don't do well, because frankly, you probably never do them well, because you probably don't even like doing them. Let's focus on the things that you can yeah, really do. And let's we can let's construct our organizations to make sure that we are focused on the core strengths of people and stop trying to get them to be able to do things that they're no good at. 
Uh, I couldn't agree more. In fact, um, I have um, a gentleman that I work with. Um, I'm part of his coaching program. Every coach should have a coach, John, or they're a big hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So I have several. And so the coach that I go to and prescribe to is a gentleman named Dan Sullivan. So if you've all never heard of him before, please go listen to one of his podcasts or something. He's a genius. And he talks about how uh, people have what he calls a unique ability. And, you know, I love what you're saying. You're like, we should have a fresh approach to people. Oh my gosh. Amen. Uh, so, you know, here's what we do. We say, here's the job. Uh, and now we need a person we need to, you know, mm -hmm. plug into that hole right there where it's almost like, what if we found an amazing human and they had a unique ability and we provided them a way to do that unique ability inside of our organization. Um, I think that would be fantastic. And so one of the exercises, um, if anybody wanted to email me, Nicole at Vibrant Coaching, I'd send you that little exercise from Dan Sullivan with his permission um, to figure out your unique ability and maybe think about the concept that, you know, there's 14 things on John's, you know, to-do list mm -hmm. every month. And he loves eight of them, but, the, but the, yeah. the other, the others, he's like, oh, kill me now and he procrastinates and he tries to, to get somebody else to do them it's like no why don't we have why aren't we having that conversation because again that is leading with clarity this is what john does mm -hmm. well give him all of it and he hates this and here's the funny thing there's always somebody who likes the thing that john doesn't like yeah. well yeah. let's figure that out it's not that hard yeah no 100 percent, and i think that's why um, and we also have to get off of these traditional uh, structures for companies. I just don't think they work anymore. And, you know, these traditional hierarchical really? structures and offices and departments. I mean, yes, obviously people have core things that they need to get done. But in the world we live in now, I mean, you have got companies that are 100% virtual, companies that are hybrid. Sometimes you have some in the office, some virtual, some in the office sometimes, some virtual sometimes external contractors i mean all of this kind of stuff you know that brought in for particular things the whole complexion of businesses are changing but we're still trying to shoehorn all of this into some old traditional structure that makes us feel good right well and again that the structure creates safety right you know so mm -hmm. like i've got my job title um do, uh, let me ask you a question john do you remember the day you got your first business card do you remember this? You um, had your name on there. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty exciting. And then I figured out, who am I going to give this to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I think, you know, again, it's kind of like, um, you know, well, the way the way I have been taught is that all humans, you know, John, Nicole, the two humans you're listening to right now, we're, we're um, addicted, and I'm using that word very much on purpose, to three things. You know, we want to feel secure. We want to have approval. And we want to have some sort of control over our lives. You know, these are all um, things that, you know, you, you notice them in a child from a very young age. You know, like if you think about a two-year-old, the two-year-old's like, look at me, look at me, hold me, look at me, hold me. It's, it's an approval mm -hmm. thing. And then the control thing, if you ever ask a two-year-old, do you, you know, eat your broccoli? No. Put your shoes on? No. You know, so th this whole thing of control is a very big thing. Um, and then also the thing of, you know, being safe. You know, so it's like, you know, come check underneath the bed for monsters, you know, uh, mm -hmm. even though we're not two years old anymore, uh, we're all very worried about security, approval and control. And I think a lot of these old structures provided answers for that. Um, but in, in today's world, I think people could find great security in knowing, again, that the leader has a vision and is excited about where we're going and uh, has this energy uh, to take us somewhere new. And I think people would flip out if they sat down and said, okay, we're gonna take your job description and take all the things you don't like away from you. That would be you imagine? a whole new version of control, right? Oh my God, I'm gonna be in control yeah. of the things I love and not have anything that I don't love. I mean, and then find somebody who yeah. loves that stuff because there is somebody. And that's a great point. I mean, there is. There's always somebody who's really good at that stuff, and they probably have stuff on their plate that they don't love. Um, what right. I wanted to come back to is, because I did catch it, uh, was this idea of uh, memory of the future, right? That you made yeah. that future memory. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about that, because I think that's, an, and if I'm interpreting it right, no, let me not interpret it. Let me let you 
go ahead. Okay. Well, so, so here's the thing about casting a vision or telling a compelling story about our future state is that um, your imagination, which is the number one thing you want to turn on in an employee is get their imagination mm -hmm. going, get their brain cooking. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you go out to the future and you say, um, you know, today we have 12, you know, locations in the future. We're completely digital or in the future we have 40 locations, whichever way you want to go, the leader gets to pick, mm -hmm. you know, which way they want to go. And, and you say, and so, um, our company, um, will interface with customers in this way. And we will have, you know, a, a new whole line of a direction of places that we will be going with regards to people we'll need to hire for leadership positions and this and this and this and this. Um, and you could, you know, you could work remotely from anywhere in the world. You know, you, you start telling the story and you get it really dialed in. It's almost like a day in the life of the future. Now, what the leader needs to do then is say, okay, so let's turn around from where we are in the future, like you said, three months and three months from now, <laughs> seven months mm -hmm. from now, or three years from now, you know, here's yeah. where we are. Okay, let's turn around and let's look back to the present. And when we do that, we're going to think about um, all the things that have to get done in order to make that future happen, right? So now all of a sudden, we're using our um, vision, the clarity of the vision to create our kind of to-do list, you know, what's going to happen. So now we can start to see, oh, that's got to happen. That's got to happen. That's got to happen. And those can have like little stories around them. Okay. So imagine we're working on this together and we're creating mm -hmm. this or that. Uh, for example, I have a client right now that is rebranding after, after they have been in business for over 80 years, they're going to get a new name and they're going to get a new mm -hmm. logo. I mean, we've been telling the stories of, you know, this is what we look like in the future, you know, and, and people get excited about this new state that they're going to be in. Right. And so that's the future state, but because we've been thinking about it, now we have a memory of the future. So I can give you a, a little example in my own life. Do yeah. you want to hear that? Okay. Yeah, please, so please. I, so I'm trying to 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 write a book right now, um, and so uh, I have a little story of the future, and it's an introspective, and it's my vision. And so Nicole Greer is in Times Square. She's at the Triple Decker Barnes and Noble, and she is in a green silk Calvin Klein dress. She has a line all the way through the business book section, and people are lined up. I'm there with my daughter and my son who work inside my business with me and I am signing my book and it's called get lit. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's a little story I tell myself and I tell my son and I tell my daughter, I tell my husband, this is what, this is what's going to go down. And so they're like, okay, mom. And, <laughs> and we, and I think about all the time now when I'm sitting here writing and I have a little writer's block, I'll go out to the future and I'll visit myself in my green silk Calvin Klein dress in the Barnes and Noble. I get so excited. I break right through. <laughs> right? Now, later on, uh, you know, I'm talking to my children about the future. Um, I, you know, I, I could ask them, you know, questions about what their pardon is. It's going to be, well, you know, Katie's handling this and Kent is mm -hmm. handling this. They're handling this and this. And they begin to see themselves in my story. Now, if I go, if I, if I were to say to you, what color is the dress that I have on in my story, John? Green. Green. What, where am I at in the future? What city? Uh, New York, Barnes and Noble, third floor. Right. I mean, if I tell the story over and yeah. over and over again, people begin to believe it's going to happen. Like Nicole's going to New York City. She's going to be in a green dress <laughs> at the Barnes and Noble. <laughs> right. So that's my little story for my life. But like, leader of the company can say today we have you know eight eight um uh, brick and mortar locations and we're going to continue to grow those but eventually they're gonna they're, they're gonna fall off and we're going to be 100 percent digital platform and that's what this means and this is what this looks like you know and here's yeah. the future that i see uh, people get super duper excited about that and uh, don't miss this hindsight becomes foresight mm. right very now good. we, yes, yeah, so we got this new thing, right? Um, and people get super, super creative. But 
you know, the, the final thing I would say about all these visions is that, you know, people ha are really cynical because they've been through a lot. Yeah. I mean, I mean, people are kind of like, you know, yeah. down there, they're depressed, <laughs> whatever. I mean, I understand. I, I have my heart's for you. And people will say this, this thing to me, John, they'll be like, how do you know it's going to work? And I just say, I don't know it'll work, but yeah. here's what I do. Here's what I do know. Doing stuff trumps knowing stuff. <laughs> yes. Doing trump knowing. I mean, I can sit around and go, I'm not sure what's going to happen, so I'm not going to do anything. Or yeah. I can get after it and go, oh, it's working. Yeah, you know? Ab so absolutely. You absolutely. No, I think, uh, and I think uh, if, if somebody said this to me once, I think it was Julie Hans, I'm not sure. But anyway, if you said, like, if you're, and this is the same as you, uh, what you're saying here is, right, if you're, if you think, okay, I'm going to go on a vacation to Hawaii, right? Mm -hmm. well, what do you think about? You don't think about the journey to Hawaii, right? You think about the, the destination, you think about being on the beach, lovely resort, you know, your foo-foo drink in your hand, whatever, mm -hmm. and and all of that. And then you take a step back and then you go, okay, well, what are the steps to get there? Okay, so I have to book it, I have to do all of this, right? But the picture of you being on the beach is the thing that's driving you forward. And exactly what you're talking about here is, yeah. is the, the, you know, the vision driving you forward. And I think the problem is, in many cases, is that is that the people are told the vision, but it's not reinforced. They're not reminded about it as you can, right. as you can, it doesn't become a memory of the future. It becomes not even a memory. <laughs> right. Because vision leaks. It just leaks yeah. out. You've got to keep filling it back up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And the other part of that then is if you're not reinforcing it all the time and you're not kind of, and you're not showing, well, look, we've made this amount of progress towards it. You're also starting to leave the vision up for interpretation. And that's never a good thing, mm. right? It's when people start to interpret it in their own ways because you haven't reinforced it and you haven't shown which pieces are helping you get there. No, that's exactly right. And I, and I think, you know, people, you know, they need the story, they need the reminder, they need the encouragement. Um, and, and I will tell you, I think a lot of senior leaders are a little bit asleep about the fact that your employees want to hear from you. Yeah. You know, when I, I, I'm 56 years old now, but when I was like 20 something, if the, if the CEO was talking to me, I was like, oh my God, the CEO is talking to me. I can't believe it. You know, like they're almost like <laughs> some kind of rock stars or something. Yeah. And, and people, uh, the senior leaders I work with now, they're like, people don't think that. I'm like, no, they do. They yeah, do. They, they do. Do. Most young people uh, inside your organization is like, how did he get or she get to be the CEO? Yeah. Like they want to know, how do you do that? And so yeah, yeah. you do have to tell your story and you got to tell how you got where you are. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, but like I said, when I ran organizations, although it was people were kind of going, how did he become CEO? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I, think no, it, I, but, I think that they probably see what you did. You've got a great personality and you're a people no, person. But, so that helps a lot getting yeah. ahead. I'm just saying. Yeah, but but the other part of what you were just saying there that was was just really interesting about uh, about the communication part. I do think that is 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 where you know people fell down even at the beginning of the pandemic and and realized you know that over over commute it's better be over commute it's better being told to 100%. back off than it is than you're not uh, doing. The other thing you mentioned in my in my mid twenties, if the the head of the company or the organization where I was walking or working was coming towards my desk. I was thinking, Ooh, this can't be good. <laughs> Cause normally I, those okay. days you only saw them when they had bad news. <laughs> right. And there's a very good point right there. I mean, like, you know, uh, it, you know, there's a, a very old book by Kim Blanchard that says, um, mm -hmm. uh, you should manage by walking around, uh, and, yeah managed by MBWA or whatever. And um, I think I think that is still a very, very good uh, strategy mm -hmm. for leadership, you know, yeah. is catch, you know, go out, try to catch people doing things right, uh, inspect mm -hmm. what you expect and and get out there and mix and mingle 100%. And then when you're there, 
you just, you know, you drop the, the vision in again. You're like, okay, hey, listen, Nicole, you're doing a great job out here doing, you know, whatever it is, the restaurant business, banking, you know, whatever it is. And I say, thank you. He's like, oh, don't forget, we're trying to grow this thing. And you, I think you're going to be an integral part of it. And just keep up yeah. doing what you're doing. If you need anything, you let me know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm no, going to work a, like a, a dog for the rest of the day. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah exactly. No, that's fantastic. Listen, this has been great, Nicole. All of Nicole's information, obviously, be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So again, my name is Nicole Greer and my company is Vibrant Coaching and Consulting. And we help people build a vibrant culture, anything from training to coaching to recruiting your next great hire. We would love to help you. And you can reach me at www.vibrantcoaching.com. And I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me there and all those other social things. But I really love the LinkedIn the most. <laughs> great well listen thanks again nicole thank you for watching and listening and i'll see you all again soon thank you thanks john